Hello and welcome back to this week's edition of the Omni Talk Fast Five. It is July 20th, 2018. Now normally we like to bring you the top five news stories from the week, but quite frankly, this was kind of a dud in terms of the news cycle. We did our best and we tried to pull together as many stories as we could, but we could only pull together three for you this week. Hopefully you'll like them, but they were really all that registered on our PR Richter scale. But before we do that, first I want to give a nod to our sponsor, Uberall. Uberall converts mobile sales through the power of location marketing across all of a retailer's platforms. Contact Uberall today to maximize revenue across all your retail locations. All right, let's get right to the headlines. Headline number one is Amazon, but it's not Amazon for the reasons you think. Sure, all the glitches with Prime Day have been well documented, but I think those are all a red herring because here's the thing. When these types of situations happen, I've been a part of them, they actually make companies stronger. And so Amazon is going to get stronger just from the mere fact that these glitches happen. And the reason that scares me and the reason I think people need to give this more thought is that what happens when Amazon isn't or Amazon Prime Day isn't just event, an event in July? What happens when Amazon smartly decides to say, hey, you know what? We're going to hold our own Prime Day in the second or third week of November, right before Black Friday. When Amazon does that, then the entire retail world and all of the holiday sales that come with it are going to be in for one hell of a surprise. And what happened this past week only makes Amazon more equipped to pull that off and understand how much volume they can put through their systems in any one given day. All right, secondly, and this is probably the single most important of the three announcements we're going to highlight this week, it's about Walmart and Microsoft. Walmart and Microsoft announced this week that they are forming a new five-year partnership. Walmart is going to leverage Microsoft's Azure Cloud platform to provide machine learning and advanced analytics. This is important. I've talked about this before, but essentially, in the world of next gener generation retailing, there are three legs to the stool. One is cloud commerce, one is the application layer, and three is location analytics. When you put those three things together, retailers can have an unprecedented level of data capture in their stores, and sales floors can be turned into the analytical equivalent of web commerce browsers. So let's look behind the scenes in terms of what this partnership potentially provides to Walmart. Well, number one, cloud commerce. Microsoft's great at that. They have the Azure platform and you're probably not gonna go with the other competitors, Amazon, you know why, and Google. Google, while they might have a cloud platform, doesn't actually have stores like Microsoft does. So they understand retail that much better. Number two, from an application perspective, Microsoft has a tremendous stable of partners that are visible to all retailers and on display at NRF every single year on the trade show floor in their booth. And then lastly, from a location analytics perspective, don't look now, but Ava Retail was just named the Microsoft Retail Partner of the Year for 2018. Why is this important? Well, because Ava Retail specializes in location analytics and visual recognition technology, the same things that power Amazon, Amazon's Amazon Go installation. So this is an incredibly important announcement. It, single, it signals that Doug McMillan of Walmart is again taking the right steps to think about how to move Walmart forward for the long term. All right, lastly, third announcement. Sheft, the meal kit company, officially got Sheft this week. Sheft announced that they are ceasing all operations effective immediately. Now, we've talked about meal kits before, and the business economics of the meal kit business are well documented. It's a hard business from an e-commerce and fulfillment perspective. There's a lot of costs that come with it. But I just put a post on Forbes out last night where I wanted to highlight something else about meal kits. Meal kits also lack one important key ingredient, and that is human-centered design. If you look at meal kits, they fail in a number of ways. Sure, you want to think they're more convenient, but at the end of the day, consumers are paying more per, per serving, and in exchange for that, they're giving up choice. They're having to decide the meals they want to have far in advance. And then when those meals come, they realize they're paying more than they probably should. And they actually could probably go and buy those ingredients on their own if they wanted to. And the adjunct to that is that they also give up their spontaneity. So it might sound good as you're online and you're looking and browsing through different menu options and you might want to have salmon remoulade on a Sunday night. But then come Wednesday, you've had a hard day at work. And the only thing that you're craving is a run to Taco Bell and some really bad burritos. And so what do you do? Do you eat the salmon or do you make a run for the border? Well, chances are if you eat the salmon, you're not super happy. And if you make a run for the border, you regret that you bought the meal kit at all. 
There are much better ways to think about meal kits and making the grocery, the grocery experience more convenient for consumers. Retailers shouldn't be partnering with meal kit companies. What they should be doing instead is thinking about how to make the grocery shopping experience more convenient. How can they leverage things like voice and recipe fulfillment technology? How can they allow consumers to shop a grocery store without having to carry a cart or use a shopping cart? How can they make the experience checkout free? How can they make it so that you can shop and that every single touch point in a consumer's life can be the equivalent of a delivery on an e-commerce doorstep? Whether it be the exit door of the grocery store, the trunk of someone's car, or even the drive through pickup lane at that grocery store. Those are the things that are going to make a difference in the long run because those are the universal points of friction for consumers every single day. Until that time, meal kits are in essence for the grocery consumer just what Steve Jobs thought the stylus was to the Palm Pilot. All right, let's get you out of here. I do want to highlight one thing because it is the most amazing thing I saw this week. And that is the enormous statue of Jeff Goldblum on the River Thames in London to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Jurassic Park, which you can see over my shoulder right now. Isn't that unbelievable? All right. Be, be sure to stay tuned as well for our After the Fast Five. Carter Jensen returns this week, so I'm sure he's going to have a lot of great insights to share with both Ann and myself. And as usual, be careful out there. <laughs>